Blessings. Good evening. Good evening, people of God. I hope your day has been good. Hope your day has been wonderful. I know that it is late and we don't normally um, come. And I know we don't normally go live this time of night, but I just had a word that I wanted to share with y'all. So I am just, um, I'm excited. So also let me catch you up on a couple of things. So we, um, the, the How I Survive conference has been postponed. So it will not be this weekend and we just going to wait on God. But that is, listen, we just, okay, we let God be God. We let him be the head. We let him be the leader. And so whichever way he wants to go, you know, that's how we will go. So I'm excited to know whenever that is postponed, I will keep you up to date whenever I know more information about that. But we will be celebrating my birthday. Um, we'll be celebrating my birthday this Sunday at Makeover Transformation Church. So join us. We're going to have dinner afterwards. It's free. You ain't got to pay nothing. Just come, enjoy, and um, we're going to have some wonderful things. I believe that the Lord is going to move as he always does. He shows up and we just let him be the leader um, and be the center of his church. So that's that Friday night, which is tomorrow. We will have our Friday night service. So come out and join us. Uh, Makeover Transformation Church, 625 Eastern Boulevard. Um, but I do have a word. So I had to, to go in the store tonight and I had to uh, go grab some water. So as I'm shopping in the store, I seen something and I was like, oh man, I thought of one of my kids. And I was like, man, that would be, that would be awesome for them. But then I had to go back in my mind and say, well, they, they haven't been doing the things that they need to do. And so I would love to bless them, but I can't reward bad behavior. And so it reminded me of Jeremiah 5 and 25. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 5 and 25, your sin has robbed you of these wonderful things. Whew. And so as I sat there, I began to ponder and I said, you know what? How many things are we not receiving from God because we're not obedient. And I'm not talking about there. It's one thing to not receive from God because you're in sin as in drinking, smoking, fornicating, lying, cheating, stealing that. I'm not talking about that. But how many blessings are we not receiving because we are in the area of disobedience as far as we're not walking in our calling and we won't obey God and we won't do what he says is good. How many things does God have? Because I promise as I'm walking through that store, I'm just like, man, I would love to, I would love to, to get this, but they just aren't doing their part. I, I tell you, I always learn the heart of God and learn the heart of him as father as I parent my children. Because then I had to think about, man. God wants to do so many wonderful things for us. He wants to, he just wants the best. My, my son is in this stage where he thinks that I'm against him. He doesn't think that he doesn't understand that just because I say no, I'm not being mean. And so I have to think about that as God, God, just because he says no to a relationship, to an opportunity, to a job, to a situation, just because he says no, he's not being mean. He can see further than what we can see. Oh, Jesus. And whatever God calls good, we have to say, OK, if God signs me up, I know that he's going to go with me. I know that he's going to be with me in this opportunity, in this door. If he opens the door, he knows everything. He knows the finances that you're going to need. He knows the people that he's going to put in place. But it be, it's, it's called walking by faith. But we have to trust the words and the one who is sending us. Ooh, Jesus, I think about parenting and when we begin to teach our children how to ride their bike and we tell them, come on, you can ride it. Yeah, you can do it. You're doing good. You're doing good. And they begin to ride their bike and they got their training wheels on and you holding on to the seat. But then there comes a season where you let go of the seat and they don't even know that they're going by themselves. Come on. Then you take them training wheels off and they no, I can't ride without the training wheels. But because something inside of you knows that they can ride without the training wheels. You can do it, baby. So many other people have done it.
really come on and i believe that's just how god is doing so many of us we are afraid to step into our calling and that is why some of us are not financially where we should be because the bible says our gifts make room for us and put us before great men our gifts make room, make opportunities, open up spaces. You you go into the opportunity and then you meet people that open up the door to the next opportunity and then you meet more people. Come on. This is how we this is why we have to use our gifts that God has given us. And so some of us are being robbed because we won't obey God. We won't step into our calling. We're afraid to do what God has signed us up to do. And I know it's uncomfortable. I promise you, I get it. It's not easy. It is who you got to trust God. So I have gotten who my God, I have gotten some invitations this week to, to come and minister in different places. And I'm just like, oh, Lord. And then I called my aunt today and I was sharing with her and it just blessed me so good because she said we were talking about something and we weren't talking about that. But what she said, it reminded me, she said, so many people are trying to live. So many people are trying to live and it's not about trying to live. It's about trying to die. It's about trying to die to self daily, trying to die to. So when I began to think about that, I was like, yeah, that's very true. And whenever we go into those statements, I'm scared, I'm uncomfortable. Then you're trying to live your, your own flesh. You're trying to live in the flesh. You're trying to do it in the flesh, but you got to rely on God. So I was asking my aunt, because she's traveled all over the world. She, that's true, Lord. She just gets in the airplane and goes. And I was like, how do you deal with the language barriers? You don't understand the things. Like, how do you? She said, it's just faith. It's by faith. It's just trusting that if God sends you, he's going to put the people in position. And it's so true. So I had to get some water in the store tonight, y'all. And so I'm carrying the water and because I, I, I couldn't find no cart. So I'm carrying it. And it was getting heavy, but it wasn't too heavy. And then I seen a cart and the scripture that came to mind was after you have suffered a little while. Ooh, Jesus. So I put the little stuff in the car and that's actually when I seen what I was saying that I think that would be really awesome for my child, but it wasn't acting like they had sense. So you gotta, you know, I don't want that to be my plight. We want to be in position for whatever it is that God wants to do, whenever it is that he wants to do it. We want to be in position to receive a blessing from God. But in order to do that, we have to stay Okay, God, I don't, I'm not comfortable. I don't love it, but I'm with you. I'm here. Okay, whatever you want to do, God, I trust you. And I just believe that even, let's just say, you believe that it's God. You believe without a shadow of a doubt and you go after it and then you realize it wasn't God. The Bible says all things work together. We're so superstitious that we won't obey God. Oh, Jesus, we're so worried. No, listen, you don't have to be worried. God said he never leave you nor forsake you. So he is with you. I don't care what's going on and what it looks like and who's with you and who's not with you. We have to stop living so sheltered. Come on. Okay. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. No man takes his life, but he lays it down. So when death comes your way and you've given your life to God, nobody can take your life. Only the Lord can lay it down. Come on. Let's get that part. No man, Corona can't take your life. AIDS can't take your life. Cancer can't take your life. Only if the Lord lays it down. Come on, people of God. So I want you to be not, don't be afraid. It's okay to have those moments and get honest with God and be like, whoo, I'm uncomfortable. But remember, the beginning of that statement is I. And so you're so then what you're saying, when you start putting all them eyes in, then you begin to say, okay, I'm taking my life back. I'm no longer allowing my life to be laid down and say, here, Lord, I surrender. Have your way. I'm a vessel. Come on. We don't never hear the water bottle getting up and saying, uh-uh, no, I don't want you to put extra, put a little color packet in it and a little flavor packet. I just want to be water. The bottle don't complain. Woo, Jesus, we're the bottle. We're the best. God, I bless your name. So we cannot complain. We're the vessel. Woo, his spirit fills us. He sends us where he wants us to go and he knows what it is that he wants us to do when we get there. So um, I'm not saying that it won't be uncomfortable. I promise you. I like to always be honest and be real. Yes, it is uncomfortable, but you have to say, listen, there's been plenty of times that I've had to do it afraid, but I still do it. Oh, Jesus. Okay, God, here we go. You want me to stop this person in the grocery store and tell them what? Jesus, bless God. Okay, well, here I go. 
A lot of times we won't obey God because of fear. And because the greatest thing we fear is rejection. But you have to realize they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. They say no. Because the enemy is not afraid whoo, of rejection. Woo, glory. The enemy is not afraid of rejection. Come on, he'll offer you anything. He don't care if you're a woman of God or a man of God or a child of God. He don't care. He's bold. And so we have to have that same boldness because the power of God lives in us. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, it lives in us. Come on, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on in the room, people of God. Woo, Jesus, if God be for me, he's greater than the world against us. And we have to come out of this victim mentality. It's killing us. It's choking us. We, we got a victim mentality gospel being preached. And we've got to, you're not a victim. It doesn't matter because people even preach it this way. You know, go tell your haters that. Thank you for leaving me. No, it's still too much attitude behind it. No, we don't hear Jesus Christ. I don't, I just don't believe he's sitting on the throne in heavenly places at the right hand of the father. I just don't believe that he's sitting there and he's complaining about the people that pierced him and the people that whipped him. And I'm telling the those that whipped me, thank you for whipping me. And I'm glad you spit on me. No, something's not right in our heart. If that's our texture. You don't even acknowledge it. He's not even, not once you've gotten to the next level, stop acknowledging the hurt from your past as in a way that it's, it's still hurting you. It's what you had to go through. It got you where you are. Many of us cannot recover from the things that happened in our childhood. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't even prosper, but you're allowing it to prosper because you keep processing it. Okay. Your daddy wasn't there. You're not the first. You won't be the last. You were touched under your clothes as a child. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but you were not the first. And unfortunately, you won't be the last. But if you're still breathing, if there's still life, God, I bless your name. Okay, let's go down this road. You have, you're married to a man and you love him. Are you married to a woman and you love him, but they've cheated. But now you really believe that you're going to, this is going to be right. And God is going to restore and God is going to keep the, the marriage together. Listen, at the end of the day, you got to say, okay, God, I trust you because the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. And what is happening is your peace. Is being stolen because you keep thinking about what they said, what they did, what they didn't do. Come on, we gotta we gotta be in perfect peace. You have it. You're not keeping your mind stayed on him. It's idolatry. Some of us our problems are idols. That rape, it's an idol. Divorce, it's an idol. Pain we've suffered, it's an idol. It's all we talk about. We're known for it. My Lord. So we have to know that if God be for us, he's greater than the world against us, people of God. And he knows everything that we've been through. He knows everything that we've been made. It came on on the other side. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You're a victor. So we got to deal with that. We have to deal with that when we're telling our testimony. And, you know, we got a lot of people and y'all don't know what I've been through. Come on, you ain't been through no more than nobody else. The Bible says your brothers and sisters all around the world are suffering. Okay? So let's not focus on the hardship. Let's get up. The Bible says endure, press through. Come on, come on, let's get through that. And once you get to the other side, even if it's just morning, the Bible says joy comes in the morning. Every day is new grace and it's new mercy. I'm not going to worry about what's going on. I'm not going to worry about what happened yesterday, baby. I can't worry. I was telling somebody the other day, I had a husband that cheated. And listen, I said, honey, all I had to, I couldn't keep letting my peace be robbed. And what I could do, what I worried about is, well, he ain't cheating right now. He's laying right here next to me. Bless God. <laughs> so I know it sounds funny in the, at, at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to make light of it, but I'm trying to help us keep our mental space clear. We get too caught up 
okay? We get too caught up. At the end of the day, listen, we got to just let God be God. And if the Lord tell you to leave, leave. If he tell you to stay, stay. But whichever way that thing is going, do what it is that you got to do. Worry about yourself and stay focused, moving ahead. I believe that this year the Lord is releasing hidden gems, hidden gems that he has hidden for his glory, those that will carry the glory that I'll come from. People going to say, where you come from? We don't know where you come from. But they don't know that, honey, I've been in the face of God this whole time. You just don't know my name, but God knows my name. Come on in the room, people of God. I believe that the Lord is releasing some of us. And so before he releases us, there are some things that he wants to clarify and cleanse us of, move through, because he don't want you to have fingerprints on you. He doesn't want you to be preaching a victim type gospel. And the other thing is this. We got victim gospel. We got vanity gospel. Now, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm not against people looking nice. But when looking nice is more important than the word that you're bringing, it's a problem. And then the other problem that we have is the entertainment gospel. The entertainment gospel. All that extra. All that slap your neighbor too much and just too much. It's too much. It's too much. If they, they, It's just too much personality. Come on, it's getting lost. We're getting lost. Some of it is too much. Talk back to me. You preaching more than I'm saying amen. That's not good. You're not supposed to be. It ain't your word. Listen, this is what the Lord has shown and the prosperity gospel. Thank you. That's true. Listen, that's so true. This is what the Lord has shown me. When people are quiet, they're receiving it. So if everybody's hollering, the whole everybody's hollering, somebody's missing what needs to be heard. When you're eating, when you're dining on the word of God, your mouth should be, you know, I'm not saying you can't say amen and all that, but y'all know what I'm saying. It's too much sometimes. You got people getting up out of their seats, slapping the neighbor, roaring all around. It's too much. It's not, come on. We're losing some of the holiness and the presence of God. It's becoming a circus. It's a lot of foolishness. And so the Lord does not want that for us. You bring the word of God. It's a two-edged sword. It circumcises the flesh from the spirit. When you hit the podium, when you hit the platform, surgery is being performed on the people of God. And you do not, you're not in the operating room with people all that playing and joking when the doctor's operating. My God, ain't nobody, this thing is serious. We got souls. You didn't come to the movies. This ain't an entertainment. So that's why the Lord has really been correcting my posture on that. No, you don't let nobody get you all stirred up, hyped up, blah, 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 blah. This ain't, no, this ain't that. We come to share the gospel. People are hurting. People are broken. People are lost. People are on the verge of suicide. People are tormented with mental illness. My God, we don't have time to be worrying about these crazy things. Someone said, do you log your dreams in a journal? Uh, I have before. I have before. Um, I write it down as I, if it's, if sometimes I just lock it in. The Lord has definitely blessed me with a memory that I can hold things. And so sometimes I write it down if I feel like that it needs to be, but I, I just, he'll always bring it back at the time that I need it. But I want us to be careful because the Lord is releasing us. We cannot be afraid to go. I know it's uncomfortable because it's going, he's taking you in a realm, something you've never done before. He's sending you places you've never been before. You're going to meet people. You don't even know the language that they speak. My God, you're going to have to rely on God in this season. The Lord reminded me of this tonight. Come on, people of God. The Lord said this. He said, listen, you have not met everyone you're going to meet. Some of us are frustrated because we feel like the people in our circle aren't helping. They ain't doing right. We don't have what we need. You have, you have not met everyone you're going to meet. But just at the right time, the Lord will send a word. I promise you, I was just today, I was blessing God and I was just thinking, I was like, Lord, I just want somebody to, to back and forth, kind of share the gospel with. And when I tell you, why did I get a phone call from overseas? And we just blessed God. Listen, it was just so good. But see, and somehow I didn't know. You have not met everyone you're going to meet. Be not discouraged, people of God. We are being sent, S-E-N-T. We are being sent this year. You're going to be asked to do things you've never done before. It's okay. God is with us. So I just came to calibrate us a little bit. But see, if you say no because you're scared, you don't know what blessing you're blocking, first of all. Because then you start to take the focus off of God and you begin to look at yourself. You don't know what miracle that you won't get. Let's process this way. 
You don't have to type it on the screen. But what is your favorite gospel song? What song gets you through? When you turn that song on, you like, oh, Jesus, thank you, God. Who I feel the presence of God. Whatever that song is, that person was obedient to God. And not only was that person obedient to God, but then the producer had to be obedient to God. And then the record label had to be obedient to God. Come on. So when you don't do your part, you might think your part is small. Well, I'm just a secretary. They don't even, they don't even do nothing. I just do the calls. I just book the appointments. I just, listen, every part of the body is important in this season. We can't tell our pinky toe, I don't need you. You can't tell your ears, I don't need you. Come on. Every part of the body in this season has to get up and function. Do what it is that God has called you to do. Be not afraid to obey God because you're blocking your own blessings, even financially, people of God. Financially, people of God. Financially, people of God. Some of us are suffering financially because we didn't obey the, the word the Lord sent in the last season. Come on. Your gifts make room, space, opportunity to put you before great people. Your finances will be released when you start to obey God. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. I am well. So I want y'all just to think about that. Let that rest on you when you sleep tonight. Don't be afraid to obey God. If he's told you to write the play, write the play. If he's told you to write the book, write the book. If he's told you to do the lab, do the lab, whatever it is. Because it's, it's important to, to put out whatever it is that God has put in you. How do you discover your gifts? Um, your, a lot of times your gifts are the things you do naturally. You've done since you were a child. Some people have the gift of help, the gift of administration, the, the gift to come alongside. If you know that, if that's your gift, and then you'll be around people that need help. Maybe your gift is to sing. Maybe your gift is to put things together. Maybe your gift is to preach. A lot of times people who have not, who have a hard time, kids who have a hard time shutting their mouth in school, it's because they're, they're a preacher, they're a teacher. Their words are anointed. They're anointed to use their words. So, you know, it's the thing that you've been doing since you were a little cupcake or a little cornbread. <laughs> so, um... Well, someone said they're in this season. Um, I'm in a season where I'm reading and fasting, praying, and still not sure if I'm hearing God. Well, that's when you go to your word because you're developing your ears. You're developing your ears, your language. God has a language. Um, there's a um, message on my YouTube channel called The Language of the King. My channel is called Makeover Ministry. I would en encourage you to watch it. It may definitely bless you. Um, hallelujah. as an athlete. Okay. How do you live a consecrated life as an athlete as far as fasting? Definitely. That's a, that's a good one. Fasting is very important. What fasting truly does is you, you train your flesh. Fasting, we think fasting is for God. Honestly, fasting is for you. Fasting is for us. Fasting teaches us to train our flesh, not to bite off, not to enjoy, not to do what our flesh is telling us to do. That's what fasting does. So when you can tell yourself, yes, I want a chicken leg, but I'm not going to eat it. God, I bless your name. Yes, I want a cookie, but I'm not going to eat it. Come on. When you begin to tell yourself that you're training that flesh, God, I bless your name. And what you put in that place is you begin to pray. You can pray in tongues. You can pray in, in your language. You can um, you can read your word. You can worship. But you put something in the place. But what I've also learned is this, y'all. Jesus told the disciples, the food that I eat, you don't even know nothing about it. Come on. The food that I eat is to do the will of my father. And I've learned that when people are truly in purpose, you, you're eating less. Because first of all, you're busy. You don't have time to sit around and eat. You don't have my, my 600 pound life time to just sit around and think about breakfast, lunch, dinner, two snacks, a night snack, a morning snack, a midday snack. You don't have time to do all that. You're too busy moving. My God, people got to shove some food in your mouth as you're doing everything that you're doing. The Bible says the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There's so much to do in the kingdom of God. So much to do. So we got to be mindful. Sometimes we're eating and it's because we're not in purpose. You have, you should not have no whole bunch of free time and you are a child of God. There's so much to do. 
There is so much. Listen, I'm trying to, whew, there's balance. We got to always find that balance because I'm, I'm one on the other end where I'll do a thousand things, but I have to learn how to slow it back down and pace myself because you don't want to burn out. So definitely, um, definitely continue to tune in, y'all. I'm excited about all the great things that God is going to do and that he is doing and what he has already done. Um, how do I allow myself to receive God's blessings? You get in your word and begin to read your word. Uh, make sure you get you a Bible that you can understand. I recommend the NLT version. The New Living Translation is very simple. It's very plain. Um, that's the Bible that I that I got saved through, and it's the one that I still read, and it's my favorite. So um, definitely want to get you a Bible. And I begin, to, what I do is just open my word, wherever it opens. When I'm studying, when I'm eating of the word for myself, I just open the word. And whatever the Lord is saying, he's talking to us. That's a love letter to us from God. It's a text message. It's an email from God to us. And so I just open my Bible and whatever that, and it always be right on time. It's the word of God. It's alive. It's living. So that's how I um, normally hear from God in, as, as in the form of reading my book. But he also speaks, speaks in dreams. I mean, my Bible. He also speaks in dreams. He also speaks in visions. He'll give somebody a word for you. He'll drop something in your spirit. A lot of times the voice of God does not sound like Jer James Earl Jones, <laughs> but it sounds like your own self. You know, it sounds like your own self and it sounds, it's a thought or sometimes it's a knowing or sometimes it's just something in your, people say, it's just something. Come on, it's just, they'll call it women's intuition. No, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit letting you know. Parents, come on, we got the Holy Spirit, our kids. Yeah, someone said, do I believe in baptism? Definitely, yes, I believe in baptism. Um, water and by fire. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptism by water. Yes, I do. Um, because Jesus got baptized. So if Jesus got baptized, listen, it's a blessing. It's a privilege to be able to um, go down and it's a public confession of your faith to be baptized. That's a blessing. Um, so, yes. Last but not least, well, actually two things that I know of and I believe we're going to wrap it up unless anyone else has any more questions. So I'm so excited. If you are on the Makeover Ministry on Facebook, we will be going through the book, my devotional that I just released. It's on Amazon. It's called um, A Doll's 90 Day Devotional. Um, it's not just for women. I'm the doll, daughter of the living, loving Savior. So if, it, if you would like to join us daily at 7 a.m., I know we're going to do Monday through Friday. I haven't decided about the weekends yet, but we're going to go through the devotional and we're going to go through it one at a time. Each day we'll read it, we'll do, we'll interact, we'll do some questions. I may bring somebody in, uh, so it just depends on how it goes, how the Lord leads. But we'll do that, and it's 99 cents per day, so you can uh, you can hop on the Makeover Ministry on Facebook and get that. It won't be on TikTok, but it will be on Facebook, so you'll have to hop on Facebook for that. Um, do you need to be baptized again if you are already baptized? Well, you don't have to be baptized again. But for me, I was baptized as a child and then I went and lived my life and did all the things I wanted to do. And so when I really surrendered my life to Christ as an adult, I wanted to be baptized again because I, I just felt like I needed that cleansing. And I wanted to do that because it is a public confession of your faith. It's a rep. It's, it's representing that the old man is officially dead and that I'm rising up a new creation come on in the room and so um yeah i think it's, it's it's definitely a personal choice but i think that most people when they reach that when you get older even if you were baptized as you were young and you really begin to seriously decide to walk with christ a lot of people do decide to get rebaptized or as a form of like rededicating their life or it's just a spiritual thing but it's personal it's personal between you and god so it's up to you which way you want to go so first we got that. So we got the Dolls Daily Devotional that we'll be reading on Facebook every morning from 7 a.m. to no longer than 8 a.m. I don't know if we'll stay a whole hour, but we do have that. And then uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is that I'm not sure if you are interested in life coaching, but if you are interested in life coaching, I would love to help you uh, come alongside you for a season. Um, is life coaching biblical? I'm glad you asked. Ananias. 
was like a life coach to Paul. Um, after he was went through deliverance, deliverance is a cleansing of mind. It's when you have that clarity and you realize that what I've been doing was wrong and I can't keep going down that way, but everything I know is behind me. Everything I know is wrong. Everything I came from wrong. All I know is wrong. My friends are wrong. My, the music I listen to is wrong. And so now I've given my life to Christ. I realize that this wrong has not led me anywhere good. Jeremiah 5 and 25, that the, the sin has robbed me of the blessings. And now my eyes are open and I see the consequences consequences of my sin and I need help. The Lord met Paul on the road to Damascus. He had a glory encounter and then the Lord sent him to Ananias to walk with him for that season. He blinded him. That blinding represents, I don't know what to do. Come on. And I, I don't know. I don't know which way to go. For me, I was privileged after I was delivered from homosexuality and I surrendered my life to Christ. I was able to go live with my aunt and she was such a blessing. I was able to go live with her and see how to live out the life of faith because everything I knew was in sin. My part, I knew how to party in sin. I knew how to celebrate in sin. I knew how to talk to people crazy in sin. When I had a good day, a bad day, everything I had known was in sin. So... I had to have, I had to be able to see something different. And so I was able to live with her. And that was so amazing. Um, whoo, somebody said, how am I able to, to remember? I don't remember all the scriptures by heart. I really don't. I promise you I don't. But um, I just, certain ones, they really stick with me. And so certain ones that I've really, those scriptures that I've read down through the years that really have been life-changing for me or eye-opening for me, I remember those. And then the Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring it back to remembrance. So as you read the word of God, he'll bring it back to remembrance when you need it. So yes, blessings to Arizona. So yes, um, so if you're interested in life coaching, definitely let me know. We can do virtual. We can do FaceTime, uh, so many whatever virtual ways we can do it. We can do phone calls, but I also offer in person and I offer, I offer individual uh, marriage and family. So whichever way that goes. And I do do house calls. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a more significant fee, but I'll come and um, even if you're in another city, fly in for a couple of days. It's kind of similar to um, kind of similar to, uh, I say her name wrong all the time, so I ain't gonna say it, but fix my life is what I'll say. It's very similar to that, but it's all biblical. And as the Lord leads me, however he leads me to, to walk you through a season, um, I'm not leading you to me. I'm leading you to Christ. I'm not leading you to me. I'm just going to teach you the tools and the strategies. Um, it is not for free because I give so much information. Listen, my YouTube channel is so full. You don't have, you don't have to have me one on one. You can, I'm sure you're going to be able to get everything you need to get on my YouTube channel. Um, seeking the Lord yourself, getting in your word, be, beginning to worship. But those that want someone to walk alongside, I'm only one person. So I'm only one princess. So I do have to charge. There is a fee. Uh, it's $25 for individuals. It's $50 for couples for up to an hour for individuals and then up to an hour and a half for couples. And then the family rate um, is the same as the couples. But if I have to come, you want me to come to your home and do a couple of days of intensive um, um, unraveling is what I call it unraveling or stabilizing the situation so that we can move forward to a greater future in Christ and begin to walk in purpose, then that is a little bit more. But it's a blessing to see people walk in Christ and to be released in their purpose. So the reason that I do the makeover ministry, we come to unravel from our past, stabilize our current situation and push us into our God purpose. Many of us, we stay raveled. We stay right here in the loop. We keep going around the same loop. We keep going around the same loop. We keep, And if you keep chasing your tail, you'll never go further. You'll never get what God has for you. It's like being on a treadmill. I don't care how many miles you run on that treadmill, baby, you're still in the same place. So that is the purpose. That is the point that we do makeover ministry. It's makeovers for the soul. Um, I also am taking invitations uh, this year, so... If you want to invite me to come and speak at a conference or something, reach out to me and uh, we'll see what the Lord's going to do, y'all. 
So I love you all. Blessings and peace, people of God. I'm excited on this Sunday. We have Prophetess Norma. She'll be bringing the word for my birthday. And so I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do. Then we got, we got some good stuff planned, y'all. God is just good. It's good to love God and all his people. I don't know who said life in Christ is boring, baby. They must think they need to come and come and stay with me for a little bit. You'll be able to see. It's very exciting to live a, a life where we continue to believe God and believe that he will do what he said he's going to do, y'all. He's not a man that he shall lie. So I love you all. Blessings and peace, people of God. Make sure you pick up a doll's 90-day devotional from Amazon. And I will see you all soon uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. We'll be on Makeover Transformation Church page on Facebook. And we'll be live right here on TikTok. So y'all have a good one.